Welcome to Rap Nation, mate. Take your order, please. Jesus Rossi is employee of the month. Welcome back to Sopranos, episode four, season three, employee of the month. Decent wee title of an episode, but was the episode decent? For me, there was a lot of filler, and if you look at the episode as a whole, it was pretty much was a filler episode with about four talking points. But we may as well dive in to where this episode begun, and we just get more... Tony, depression, depression, Tony. What else would it be as Sopranos without Tony Soprano being depressed? But he's at the, he's at Dr. Melfi's. He thinks that this isn't really working and that he needs her to start coming up with the goods or else he's really not worth paying his money. And no, I don't get, right? Why is it up to her? Why can't he just say, right, this is it. I want it done. I'm out. It's a one and done. I want to leave. I'm wasting my money here. I don't want to sit here every Thursday or whatever day it is. Come on, Tony. Is he not big enough to make those decisions for himself? Yeah, she's not holding him hostage for sure, is she? No. Tony wants to leave. I'm sure he can get up and just walk away. No, he's not. He then pays a visit to... Plus, G Tony wants these meetings anyway. They get sad when they get cancelled and shit, so... <laughs> that uh, really messes right. up the knee. Uh, but he pays a visit to Janice. He's like, why'd you get locks on the door? And she's like, ah, because Ukrainians. And he's like, don't mess with the Russians because uh, I'll come back to bite you. It does come back to bite Janice later on. May as well just wrap this story arc up. She's sitting there playing the guitar. Two Russians barge in. They, they say, give up. Give, give up the leg. Give prosthetic leg. Give prosthetic leg back. It is my mother's. No, bitch. And then just a big bitch slap. And then the next scene literally just cuts to Janice in like a, a locker or like a bus station or something getting at this prosthetic leg. This is just a fucking pointless feud, isn't it? There's just nothing to it. She stole a prosthetic leg. Like what? It, it was literally just for Tony to like bury her. It's it's just to fucking make Tony's life more complicated. I mean, that's the only reason this leg was stolen. He's like, all you do is cost me money and time, Janice. Money and time. Christopher then pays a visit to Tony. Tony drags him into the basement because he thinks no one will hear him there. But obviously, yes, if you forgot about it, there's a lamp, a talking lamp in the basement that hears all these conversations. What a boring job these two guys have got in the fan where they literally have just sat there for the past couple of months listening to the conversations. I suppose it makes a better decoy than uh, than Big Sal. Aye, fuck, there's big, big a size difference there, but... Uh, big lamp, big Sal. Um, Tony does scold Chris about like the fact why you got Jackie April Jackie April Jr. involved in this like heist and this score you were doing, but he's like, ah, oh, the kid's good. He's the hair he's the hair apparent. He may have pissed his pants, but he's the man. He was great apart from the fact he pissed all over the front seat. I mean, how can they even take this guy serious? All he had to do was wait out fucking side and he pissed himself. That should be an automatic disqualification yeah, for ever going on another getaway, job again. He was the getaway driver, like, and he's pissing his fucking pants. Is this not the main man's fucking son, Richie April? Uh, Jack, or not Jack, Jackie April? Uh, yeah, it is, I, and I just, I, I just don't really get this, right? Um, See, looking back, though, I think they killed Jackie April off too quick. Far too quick. Why not make it he gets cancer in, in season two? You never really felt like Jackie April was in charge of anything. I would like to have when seen... When we first get introduced to him, he, I just think Tony's rise to the top happened too quickly. I would like to have seen interaction between Richie, Jackie April's son, and Jackie April. Would you not? Right. Another episode where there's no junior. I'm talking of Jackie April. He is sitting down with Ralph, who's essentially, you know, it's not his stepdad. I mean, it's, this, Ralph is seeing his mother, so we can call him his stepdad if we want to call him it, right? And then they pay a visit, protection money, whatever. They're trying to get... The, the payment, but he's like, I already told you, the money not late, not work is. And then Ralph's like, all right then. Then a two for one here. This guy gets beat up rather pathetically. And well, he does come at them with a baseball bat, like, so. No, he does. He gets beat up and Jackie April. So it's like, is, Ralph's trying to win this kid over, but it's like everything Tony wants this kid to be. He's not, I, I See this whole gimmick, though? I made a promise to your old man. I mean, fuck it. If the kid wants involved, why does Tony... He doesn't give a fuck about his own kids. Why does he care about this guy? I think he just wants a big hug, personally. God, yeah, yeah, he wants a big hug, damn it. He wants a big, big... Soprano hug. Uh, Tony then visits Johnny Sack, who, of course, is, like, you know, one of the top guys in New York, and he's moved to New Jersey. His wife's fat as fuck, which the crew made a joke about later on. But you wouldn't think so. There's all these top guys that we've never seen before, and they're just randomly walk in and if we have seen them before we can't remember seeing them so therefore are they really top guys well we've seen this guy before but point is 
He's moved into Jersey. And no, Tony, but Tony would have liked the phone call. They just don't have a fucking lasting impression. See, and like, son, let's go to Sons of Anarchy since that's the show we like. See, any time you meet a president for, for one scene, he could come back in a year's time and you know who it is. Like, see, Jury, you seen him in episode four, Indiana Hills. And it's like when you see him in season seven, it's like, ah, that's fucking Jury. That's Jury White. That's the man. Same with Packer. Yep. You see Packer for a tiny bit in SOA, and then when he turns up in Mayans, you're like, that's Packer. See these big guys in the Sopranos, like, I don't know, maybe all, maybe all Italians look the same. Yeah, like, Tony's butthurt about the fact this guy's moving to Jersey without a phone call, and he's like, ah, oh, well, New York's only 40 minutes away over the bridge, big man. Tony's like, yeah, but you should have told me. And he's like, yeah, I know, but he's like, yeah, but you should have told me. It's like, all right, Tony, no need to fucking great about it. Like, Probably. he obviously thinks this guy's been placed there or something. Maybe Tony did tell him and, to, and he, t- he took a, another one of his fits. Right, Tony and his fits. So anyway, right, let's get to the... I, I mean, I probably said it was the main... No, that's the weird thing, right? I would say Dr. Melfi's story... She, she got a lot of screen time this episode, right? And you know what? See, going forward in the series, this nothing comes for this. So for me, this is filler, right? So she's done one late night with Tony. All right, I'll have to go home. It's 10 p.m. She then walks past this guy, Jesus Rossi, in the parking lot. She's on the phone to her husband. Do not give a fuck about her husband, do you? I don't. Richard. 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 No. Richard. No. She then tries to get in her car, but then she gets attacked from behind. The guy's like, don't t- don't turn around. I've got a knife. She then like stands on his foot. She runs away, and then he catches her in the stairwell, and then he proceeds to rape her, right? But what what was this guy? Don't turn around. So obviously he didn't want to see her to see his face, and then he proceeds to do this while showing his face. Not the smartest decision, was no, it? No, he, he's really from not. the employee of the movie? He's not, no, he's not the, the smartest Cookie man, he's really not. He gets arrested, right? She's in the hospital bed, whatever. Um, he, he, like they said that he's uh, his works around the corner, and he was caught with what I can't remember. He was caught with one of her items in his possession or whatever. And then Richard shows up. Then the son shows up. The police are all in the room. And he's like, oh, I'm gonna give fucking... me five minutes with him in a room. I'll kill him. This is a guy for the office. You know who it is? No, but our, our son looks like a bit of a joke. Sure, was he not the one that was complaining at him? They're out for at I, the guy was smoking. Yeah, it's what's like, this guy? Oh, what's See, this guy spent five. We should fucking rape him, rape, as well, <laughs> <fuck>. <laughs> rape him too. Um, but yeah, this I just didn't give a fuck. I'm sorry. I mean, you know, rape's a, a, a really serious crime, but I just feel like if you're going to whip something like this, it it should be on a character that actually fucking matters to Tony. Although I think Doctor Malfi, I think Tony would care more to, about Malfi than if it happened to his daughter or Carmela. Yeah, but would not be more important if it happened to them. I don't think so. Yeah, but the problem, the problem is, Tony never finds it. Spoiler, he never finds it. So what? what's the point? Well, I think the only way this should happen is that if Tony is going to find it. Otherwise, what's the fucking point? Tony's the main character. Dr. Malfi's only there to serve Tony, really. It was kind of like a power player, her being like, I could have that bug squished if I want it, but I'm not going to because I'm the bigger person sort of gimmick. Is that really a power player? Is that just making you look weak? I think it's weak. I think you should be fucking acting to kill this guy. Richard says, oh, I'd kill him, but I just end up in jail because that's how fucked the, the justice system is, damn it. Yeah, I agree with you, Richard. You may be pish character, but I agree with you there. Um, we then get a really awkward scene. I know, but is that not, is that not an easy way out? A cop, cop out? Like, it's like, ah, I, I would get revenge for you, honey, but I'll end up in jail, so let's just let him get away. I think Tony would say that. Ah, Carmel, I know you raped you and all, but... Hey man, I don't want to go to jail. <laughs> Remember Clay? He was like, I mean, look, Gemma, these guys, these are serious guys. We'll let it go. We don't get bloody. We don't cut their goddamn heads no off. No retaliation. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm no. Don't want to do five years. <laughs> I do trust him. Aye. <laughs> anyway, right, the scene where he's on the phone and uh, the guy's been released because one of the detectives got moved to some other division. And even that seems like a pish fucking throwaway. And I'm not, I'm not saying like, Dumb shit like that doesn't happen in cases get thrown out, but so, so because one detective or whatever leaves, all of a sudden this guy gets away scot free, even though she can identify him. Like if George Bush, right, resigned on September 11th, does that does that mean 9 11 is irrelevant? And, uh, it's all right, it's a rare laugh. I pulled the trips out, George Bush is away. He's we don't want the oil, George. George, your boys left. Um, but then, right, so he hears on the phone about the whole case has been like rescinded, the guy's just he's able to go free. She he, he cracks up a little bit, but rightfully so, because it's a piss take. Then Dr. Malfi's complaining to her husband and says, how dare you do that? 
phone them back up. He does phone them back up. He tries to apologise, but she's like, no, put me on. And then they tell her the exact same thing, and she puts up less resistance than he did. And then she puts the phone down, and then starts blaming her husband on her getting raped, which I didn't like. It's yeah. like, I mean, I don't know, she's barking up the <laughs> wrong tree there, for sure. Because, I mean, he... I, I think he I, says, but if I wasn't on the phone talking to you, and I wasn't so distracted, then it wouldn't have happened. Plus, she blamed him because... No, you get overpowered, because it's relevant if you're on the phone or not. She felt like he was only annoyed because it was an Italian person that done it. What a fucking retarded thing to say. Yeah. I think, so he tell me if it was a black guy, they'd have been fucking loving life. I'm not really buying that. Not buying it. Also, I'm not. I just, I just, it just took up far too much of the episode. And like you said, we've no idea, like, what sort of, like, um, how much time has passed or whatever. Just literally happened in the episode. Um, Jackie April and turns up at Tony's house. Tony's like, you know, like, you're your old man. I made, I made him a promise. Uh, and he's like, yeah, I know, T, but I didn't want to do medical school. So she gave it. And then Meadow turns up. And, and, and then she's like, ah, oh, because I've got black friends, Dad. And then he's like, Friends will live under the blanket on my couch watching movies. <laughs> and Jackie Appeal's just sitting there, smirking away, and Tony's like, just get the fuck out, big man. Well, oh, yeah, you know what's going on, like, he's oblivious to it. No, he is oblivious to it. Um, then, like, we have, like, a party at Johnny Sack's house about, you uh, know, he's moved to New Jersey. But you know what? Me- Meadow's a dumbass. What was she thinking was going to happen? Yeah. I just don't think it's a good idea, knowing who your dad is and the way he gets on. Why would you bring anybody to your fucking house? Like, we could talk about Tony... T- Let alone some black guy that you just know he's not going to approve of. We can, we can talk about Tony... No, but she says, oh, you're racist. If, if she knows that he's still racist, then why the fuck bring him in the first place? No, but we, we were talking about, like, Tony Soprano's got so much control, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, there's some guy in his house he doesn't even know with his fucking no, sandals no, yeah, 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 no, well, that, that, That's off. true, but my point is, like, literally every family member walks over the top of you. Even his sister does. Like, literally everyone does. You could argue the person that does it the least is fucking Junior, and he's the guy that probably should do it the most. Like, I, I, see, see, as soon as that black guy appeared in the, his house, and he, he should say to Meadow, and that should be case closed, if he's fucking top man. I know he can't really say to his daughter, do you know what I can do to you? Because it's, it's his fucking daughter, but... Right, Johnny Sack's party, nothing really mega happens here. Ralph makes a quote for gladiators. Um, Then they're like, oh, how much do you think this set Johnny Sack? But, oh, the... The grind has to be 150k, big man. And then Tony, he shows, he, well, actually, Dr. Melfi phones Carmela. Carmela thinks he probably doesn't even see a psychiatrist, probably just another bit on the side. And then Tony's like, oh, that's not good. Oh, her knee, I could scar. I won't be pretty. And he, it just screams autism with Tony here. He's talking about a fucking knee injury. He has no idea what it looks like. And he's like, oh, I'll never heal, right? Oh, are you, Dr. Dr. Tony? No, I think what it was is he was concerned, but he was trying to downplay it. And it came off weird. Yeah, and then he dug himself into a bit of a hole with it. Uh, he then appears at Dr. Melfi's, and she's like using a walking stick, and but she what, broke her leg. I think she did say she broke her leg or something. No, I said she twisted it. Twisted it? Right, there you go, twist it. You listened, I didn't. Broken leg, she wouldn't be walking like a week later. Although the time the time frame in this episode was complete. This episode, I think, lasted about a month. I'm not even joking. I think it did. It could have eaten. Yeah, you know what, it could have, to be honest. Um, and she like starts breaking down. Tony goes behind her, and she's like, "Oh no, 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 no! Back to back to your seat, Tony." And then she's like, "The end." And then like literally, as soon as she says like, "The end," it ends, and it's just like, right. So this episode. Did that say then? Tony asked her, "Is there anything you want to talk about?" And she went, "No." That's a bomb. Yeah, uh, yeah. She didn't say the end. Well, I'm aware T- she didn't say, but she may as well have T- said the Tony end. Tony wanted her to open up, and she's like, "No." And it just woke up this. Mo- that's how. That's how it ended, guys. And you know what, right? And I, I know you shouldn't really factor this into an episode rating, but this plays no factor going into the future. Like, realistically, all that happened here, we, we saw a bit more of Ralph and, like, Jackie April maybe moving towards being more of a, like, mafia guy rather than the, the doctor or Tony always wanted. Did we really care about that that much to boost this rating up? A, prosle- a prosthetic leg got took back and Johnny Sack moved house and Dr. Melfi got raped. I'm going to give this episode a 5 out of 10. I'll give it a five as well. It was, it was decent, <laughs> solid, average. Middle of the road. Middle of the road. A soprano special. Ah, a soprano special, guys. Anyway, we're back very soon. Up next, Burt Young. He's in that episode. Damn it. 
Bert, you know who Bert Young is? Of course I know who Bert Young is, for God's sake. It's Polly. Come on, Rock. Come on, Rocky. Fuck the Rock. Anyway, guys, till then. Peace.